Hey guys, it's Steve on the Guru Brew. How you doing today? Today I'm going to show you how to make a thumbnail image for a video. You know, in YouTube, when you upload videos to their service, you have the option of supplying your own thumbnail image or just picking one of the random images that they find inside the video. And it's definitely better to make your own image because it can bring attention to your video and perhaps get more views. Not only can you use this technique for videos, but you can also use it for Facebook or Twitter, that sort of thing. So let's get started. Okay, well on the screen here is an example of the thumbnail that we're going to be using today. I'll redo this image and show you how to do it. If you look at this image, it's quite clear that this is a video about a generator, and it even says this old generator on it. So let's start from the beginning. This is Windows 7 that I'm working on, and I'm using Photoshop 7. Okay, so let's make a new file. The first thing that we want to do is go to our video that we will be using and watch the video and find an interesting bit in it and then we'll copy the screen. Now this is a video of my old generator and I just made this video so you would be able to see me make a sample thumbnail of it if you will. So I'm just watching the video and waiting for an interesting shot, something that describes what this video is, is about as well as something that's eye appealing. And you can just watch it or you can, you know, um, skip through it. I just like to watch it. That's how I do it. Um, so this back in this way here is the one I selected right here it shows the plugs it shows the generator and the muffler and a few of the plugs so I think this is a pretty interesting image you can pick any one that you want but this is the one we're going to use for the sample and then what you want to do is pause it like I have mine here and then find the print screen button on your keyboard and the print screen button on my keyboard is function print screen, but yours may be different. And make sure that you are at full screen mode when you do this, okay? So I'm holding function down on mine and I'm pressing the print screen button. And what that's done is it's taken a snapshot of what's on the screen right now and put it into memory. So let's go ahead and use the escape key to get out of full screen. I'm going to go to my Photoshop 7 application and close everything out. I'm going to go up to uh, file and start new, okay? And for now, we can just take the defaults that are here and it will base it upon what's in the memory, which is our generator. So let's say, okay. And then just go to edit and go down to paste here, okay? So there's our generator. Now you can see we have to crop this because not only did it capture the screen with our generator, it also captured our player controls. And so, you know, we want to crop those out. So if we hit our cropping tool here, you want to set this up for 16 by 9 aspect ratio. I'm not going to go into great detail about what aspect ratio is, but that is the given size that is best for YouTube videos, 16 by 9 equals 700 pixels by 394 pixels high. And then I usually give it a resolution of 100. So you want to put your 700 in the width, 394 in the height, and 100 in the res uh, resolution. Okay. And then we want to come up here and grab a corner and pull down. And that will, um, those numbers will keep our dancing ants, if you will, proportioned to that size. And we can move this around till we get the best view that we want. And you can make it smaller or bigger. I think I'm gonna go stick with something right in here. Maybe a little bit bigger. And then when I double click inside this, it'll crop it just like that. So this is really our main base for our thumbnail image. And what I like to do now is go under image and adjust and 
use the curves and the levels and try to improve the image by darkening and lightening the highlights and the midtones. You can see I can improve the image just by moving the, the tones around. And this just takes some experience and I recommend if you don't know much about the curves, you could always go up under image, adjust, levels, and this one here, you can just move the highlight, shadow, and midtone around with these little arrows here. It's a little easier to use for beginners using the curves. Pretty much does the same thing. And then when you're satisfied with the way that the image looks, go ahead and hit OK. So this is my base image, and before I go any further, I should probably come up under File and Save As, and just save it so that nothing happens to it. I'm just going to call it uh, Gen, and I'm going to leave it as a Photoshop document, and the reason why I'm doing that is so I can have levels, and I can go in and edit it later, and then when we're all done, we'll save it as a JPEG and then send it to YouTube, okay? So that's my base. The next thing I would like to do is go ahead and add some text. Now that's pretty easy to do in Photoshop. All you have to do is hit your T button here in the Tools menu. And then you can click on this up here to select the color of the text that you would like to go with. Let's go ahead and start with this red. You can see I can move this around to any color that I want. But uh, I'm going to stick with this, this deep red color here. And then you can also change your font, and I usually will set my size of my font fairly small and then make it bigger later, and I also adjust my font style later too. So if you click in the image, you can begin typing. I'm just going to um, name it this, old, um, and I'm going to skip down one and go generator. So this old generator is what I'm calling this, okay. And if I highlight that here, and I can actually move my size of my type up with this tool here, let's go to 60 and you can see how it made it bigger. So I could leave that like that, or I could move it down a separate line. I think I'm going to go ahead and move generator down on a second line. So I'm just going to um, move down one and, and put it right here, and then I can move that up. Now if you're having trouble with the space in between, like I am here, and you notice there's a big space difference, you can fix that by highlighting the text and going underneath this tool right here. It's a character and paragraph palette is what it is. If you click on here and you change this letting tool to auto, um, it'll fix a lot of problems that are associated. You can see how it moved that up just by doing that. Or you can type in a number here, like um, let's try 55. Now you can see how it moved it up. So that looks a lot better, just like that. So I could leave it like that, but the problem is, is the text kind of gets lost within all this, this color. So a lot of times what I'll do is I like to add a drop shadow to the actual type. So I can come up under my layers and go to layer style and add drop shadow. And you can see where it's already started to add a, a black shadow. And you can play with these settings by moving them back and forth and actually improve your image and see it on the spot, what it's going to look like. And you can also change the color of the shadow here. I've got it set for black, but if you had it for green, you can see what it does here by making it green. I'll usually go with black, though, because I think it highlights the best. Or yellow, a lighter color, even white. That's what white would look like there. So I'm going to stick with that, and you can also play with some of these other tools that are in here too, like the inner shadow. It makes like a dark ring around it. I actually like that. I think I'm going to keep that. And there's some bevel tools and contour tools in here. You can play with all those. Anyway, um, that's pretty much the idea of what I wanted. I think I want to go a little bit bigger with the text. 
So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that text. I'm going to, it's 60 right now. I'm going to go up to 70 and see what that would look like. So that looks pretty good. The only thing I see wrong is now the T and the G are touching, and that's because of that letting tool, and I can just make that a little bit bigger. Let's see if that made a difference. Not too much. Let's try it one more time. Um, we'll go 70. Let's see if 70 will help it out. Or we could even just go to auto. So you can come in here and play with this and, you know, get different looks. I'm just going to leave it like that for now because I think it looks fine for this example. And I want to show you how to do one more thing. I'm going to go ahead and put my, uh, my dog Shadow's head right here. Not that it has anything to do with this, this thumbnail at all, but um, just to show you how you can bring in other images. So let's go back to my... Um, file folder and find a picture of my dog and I'll show you how to put it in this image here. Okay, so let's go to my file folder and go back through my files here. I know I have a picture of my dog shadow that I wanted to use. Let's use this one right here. It's a nice one. We'll click on it. It opened it up in Photoshop and, and what I wanted to do is use my lasso tool here and put a feather pixel around it of two pixels. And the feather tool is really nice because what, what it will do is it will make it so the, the tracing that I'm doing right now isn't so rough, so coarse. It kind of mellows it out. Now I'm just going through this tracing really quickly. I'm not spending a lot of time because I can always fix it later if need be. But you can see I've just taken my lasso tool and went around the dog's face fairly tight. Now I can go underneath this, this edit and go to copy here. I'm going to go ahead and close shadow. I don't need her anymore. No. And if I go under paste, it'll actually add a new layer. And there she is. Now I can go under edit and I can go to transform, scale. And if I grab one of these corners and I hold my shift key, I can proportionately drag her down so that she's proportionate to the size that I want. So that looks pretty good right in there. I'm going to put her over in this corner, but I want her turned the other way. So let's go ahead and drop her right there for a minute. I'm going to zoom in here with my magnifying glass. So now you can see what I've got so far here. Now, let's go ahead and go to edit and go to transform and I want to flip it horizontally and you can see it just flipped her head there. Now I can go ahead and use my arrow tool here and just move her right into the corner there. So it almost looks like she's saying this, this old generator. And I'm going to go ahead and make her a little bit bigger, transform, scale. I'm just going to pull out on this corner and hold my shift down. There it is. So there it is. I'm going to click on my text here and move it away from her face just a little bit so you can see that R. Actually, I think I'm going to um, rescale it slightly smaller. It's at 70. Let's go to 68. Nope, that totally blew it. Let's do it again here. Um, 68. There we go. So it's a little bit smaller and you can still see the R. And if I want to, you know, I could always come in here with my magnifying glass and look around the edges and make sure that the dog is well separated. I just did a quickie to show you, you know, how to throw this stuff together. And if you go through your layers palette here, you can pick out the thing that you want to edit, like here's shadow on layer two down here. Now I could go under my image, adjust and curve, and I could actually move these curves around on the dog to brighten her or darken her and leave the rest alone, just like that, see? Okay, so now that you're, you've got your thumbnail and you're happy with the way it looks, 
there's only one thing left to do and that's save it and I recommend saving it in the Photoshop um, file format so that you could go back and edit it so that your layers remain but to upload it to YouTube or any of the other Facebook or something like that you're gonna wanna go to file and save it and change the format from your Photoshop PSD image to a JPEG is usually what's most popular and if you save it as a JPEG let's put it on the desktop here then it will easily download to the, the services okay so this is what it looks like with the uh, JPEG image this has been flattened out and I think this is a really good thumbnail for showing what this video is about you might think my dog might be in the video but you can tell it's about an old generator because it says so and it's fa fairly eye appealing so I think I might watch this video <laughs> So anyway, that's how you do it. If you have any questions about this technique, you can leave me comments below and I'll try to get to them. So this is how you would make a video thumbnail using Photoshop. It's not that tough and it makes the videos look a lot more professional. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.